Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see here, I have the Star Trek Voyager Kazon Torpedo. Now, if you follow me, you knew in my last video, I built the Kazon Cruiser and uh, what a lot of work uh, that was. All the lights and everything, uh, but it came out very good. I'm very uh, pleased with uh, the end result, uh, even though it was a lot of work. So uh, since I built that and had this kit already, I felt I might as well um, build this one to go along with that kit and I can uh, display them together. Uh, now this, from what I understand, is uh, just as bad of a kit as far as fit and gaps and everything. Uh, not a whole lot of parts. Very basic instructions. And there's these old monogram kits. You can see right here, I haven't opened this one up other than open the box. Uh, you can see there's basically two runners. And I kind of have four parts of the body. Uh, looks like we have some two engines, two half, you know, or four halves of engines to make two engines and various detailed parts. Again, not a whole lot of parts. Um, as with the cruiser, I would like to light this. Now I'll have to do a little research. Um, show some glowing parts there. And I just don't know if it's going to be possible just looking at this kit. I'll have to really kind of get into what's actually glowing there now. As far as the engine nozzle in the back, I think that there would be more than enough room to throw some uh, LEDs in the back of that and illuminate those nozzles. That should not be too hard. Looks like they fit in there. We just draw some holes. Um, there won't be a whole lot of line lighting on this one. Looks like there's some lights coming off this body panel and I do see where uh, that is a detail on one of the parts on both sides of the torpedo and probably could put a fiber optic or even a small SMD or LED right inside to illuminate that part of it. I'm not sure what's going on right in here. Doesn't really look lit. So I'm not really sure. As always, I uh, take some liberties when I'm doing these kits. So I might add to some fiber optics or blinking lights or something just to give it a little more um, character to it because it does look like we'll have plenty of room. I think the challenge from what I've heard from many people is just that uh, many of these four parts just do not fit together well. So um, we will deal with that. Anyway, uh, we're going to get started, open it up, start planning out the lighting. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and assemble the engines. That should be a gimme since they're, they just seem to kind of sit on the top here. And I'll get a better look at the back and see if there's any other lighting going on beside these two engines. So we'll get started with this and uh, see what we can make out of it. All right, here I'm working on the engine lighting and you have uh, these bottom pieces. There's two engines. There's the tops, here's the bottoms. You can see where they have these uh, parts right here. This is the top section of the ship. You can see where these parts kind of fit in like that. So for lighting, there seems to be plenty of room to put, um, I have some five millimeter pre-wired orange LEDs that I used in the Kazon Cruiser. I have, still have quite a few left over. There's plenty of room to mount these in here. I don't even think you have to do any trimming. So you can see where I've already cut a hole and I first started off by notching out a section on this raised part because it's going to, have to go right through the middle to go into our ship. So I notched that out. I then took a small drill to uh, do a pilot hole to make sure my drill bit didn't come off. Uh, once I had that pilot hole, I drilled in a larger hole to accommodate the size of the wiring. Once I did that, I fitted it into place so I would <clears throat> know where that was going to be installed. And then once again, took my drill and finished that hole. So now I have a place for my wiring to come in. Uh, in retrospect, I probably could have moved that up because the way my wiring is with these pre-wired LEDs it has this resistor so you can bend them you just have to be really careful but I try not to bend them if possible but what I found is that 
because this is going in at this point, you know, I'd have to bend it more. But there's space up here, so I found if I just kind of give it a little bit of, of slack, there's plenty of room for that to go in there. And then I can butt this up right up close to the engine nozzle like that. And then I will attach the top section. I'm gonna get it all in there, but like that. And as you can see, we have room for our lighting. Now, of course, I'll glue this into place and I'll do some light blocking or where this LED, I'm just gonna paint it black uh, in there to kind of keep this from glowing once we get it all painted up. But there's plenty of room, but I will glue this in position so it doesn't slip back and forth. Now, once I finish this, I'll probably do something about uh, putting something in here to help diffuse that light um, and bring it out closer to the edge of the nozzle, but that will be later after painting. So um, once I get that glued in there, I'm going to have to seal these up. Of course, I'm going to have to fix all of this where the uh, is attached to the sprue, fix those seam lines. So that's how the uh, engine lights will be done. All right, that's some of my beginning work here. As you can see, I've taken the bottom section and attached my mounting rod here and just some brass tubing to run my wiring through, um, much like I did the Kazon Cruiser. I first kind of super glue this into position and then I put hot glue along with some styrene for some added support and it's not going anywhere. It's very secure. And I put a little bit more super glue around here just kind of hold it in place and uh, very secure. I've also noticed that on these uh, back kind of wing sections of the torpedo uh, in the box art, it appears that these sections right here glow. Now this was actually closed off and uh, but it is raised up so it's easy to kind of tell where to cut out. And I just cut a series of uh, small holes in the corners then take a exacto knife to kind of clean that out once I got those series of holes and then I have a small square file to kind of uh, finish up the shape along with little sanding sticks to um, finish that out. Now this is a, uh, has some parts where I had to do uh, a similar thing to the upper part of this wing. And I'll have a nice, uh, should be plenty of space in there for uh, some of my, I have quite a few of orange five millimeter pre-wired LEDs left over from my Kazon Cruiser project. Um, I should be able to uh, very easily uh, put one in position there so I'll light both the uh, top and bottom section of this wing. And uh, I'll have to, what I'll do is once I get it painted up and stuff, I will uh, probably cut out some clear styrene, sand it up, and uh, just put it over that to have uh, some light diffusion. And uh, hopefully that will give us a nice glow. So just getting that section done. Uh, one thing I wanted to, uh, just really looking at, um, I've seen a lot of people comment of uh, the bad fit issues where they actually just kind of gave up on trying to build a model. So looking over, uh, the model comes with these sections that are inside, there's two of them. There's one for the rear and one from the front. And you have these groove sections that this kind of goes in. And I believe the, uh, uh, in the, uh, Instructions you mount the top and bottom sections together first using these uh, spacers, I guess. Um, here you can see where there's actually kind of a divot where that's supposed to fit in. And I think this may contribute to part of the fit issues. Uh, I'm not sure if it's even really needed. As you can see, it kind of goes in that groove and it does similar with the back. Because one thing I noticed is that this doesn't fit real well, and I, and I think if it's not seated this right or flushed and that may lift this up too high and then create some serious gaps when you go to put the side panels on um, so uh, just looking at it i just don't think it's even necessary i i think that um, probably a way i'm going to try to go is uh, we've got the top section here this is one of the side sections and i think i uh, will just try to attach it by itself attach the sides to the top and then put that on top uh, put that lower that down on the uh, bottom section here and I think that will work uh, this isn't a big model there's uh, 
uh, it doesn't seem, uh, I think once we get it secure, it's just no need for those supports. And I think it may help uh, with the fit issues. Now there were some more as I'm, you want to dry fit this because there is a section, I think it's here on the uh, bottom where you have to kind of watch out. When I was dry fitting this, it kind of goes in like this. Well, one area, and I've already cleaned this up, was right here. Uh, this was hitting and causing this not to sit uh, properly because you want all these panels to line up. That's where, uh, you know, we got to address that seam line eventually. That's supposed to be a solid part, so we're going to have to address that. So we want that as even as possible. And the section right here was, uh, I had to sand it because it was forcing this not to sit Correctly. So I think that was another part of the fit issue. So I think if we leave out those supports and just kind of do a lot of dry fitting uh, before we go to glue, I think we can get a pretty nice fit. Um, so I, I want to do the top first because that's going to be the most visible and work on that to have nice, you know, there's still going to be a lot of cleanup. We're still going to have these huge seam lines and we're going to have to spend some time cleaning that up to make that look nice. And I think if we get the top looking good, uh, once this sits down on the bottom, the bottom, uh, even though we'll work on it to try to make it look nice, it won't be as uh, as visible. So hopefully that will address the fit issues that people have said they have. Um, I still, like I said, just take your time, do a lot of dry fitting, make sure the parts are fitting together well, and we'll glue this together. Now gluing in these parts together is going to be a little tricky. There's no uh, connecting tabs. We're removing these parts here, and they didn't really help anyway to me uh, because even though this kind of sits in here it really doesn't connect with the sides the sides doesn't and, and when i was dry fitting them uh, it, it, there's no connect it, it'd be nice if they had some locking tabs so it would lock into place but the sides just don't have anything so another reason why i just don't understand this part designed the way it is it's just to me not designed very well uh, I think there were some good intentions there, but this doesn't fit well and there's no real locating tab and you're still going to have issues uh, locking this into place. Um, so I'm going to venture outside a little bit. And also by removing this, um, which this could easily drill some holes. When I run my wiring, there's some uh, uh, going to be some small uh, fiber optics and, and uh, wiring for the engines and things that I'm going to need. Uh, these won't get in the way. Now these are going to be, uh, that's a nice detail for an inner part. Um, that looks like a door or something, so definitely go into my Greebly box, uh, and we'll keep those for another project one day. But I just don't think they're needed. It's, it's not a very big ship. Um, you have some angles in there that give the uh, side structure. Uh, they don't want to bend very easily, so I just don't think those parts are necessary. And I think by removing those, it will make it much easier to connect these parts, and we'll get a nicer fit. And there's still going to be a lot of cleanup, and that's just uh, these old models, that's to be expected. Um, but I think we're starting off in a better place by doing that. So that's where I'm at. I, I also noticed that on these uh, on the sides and on the, uh, the bottom section, there was these uh, what appeared to be some lights, like I said before. And so I drilled some holes into that section, the approximately where that light was, and I'm just going to run fiber optics. So it won't be super bright, but it will give us our uh, lighting effect there, and I think that will look nice and give the model some life. So that's where I'm at. Uh, I think uh, next one I'll be doing is connecting these uh, uh, parts here, the top. I'm sorry, the uh, top with the two sides. That will be my next step. So. That's where I'm at, and we'll just keep moving forward with it. All right, as you can see here, I've got the top part of our torpedo all put together, and I think going without these uh, supports is really the way to go. Um, it wasn't too difficult to attach the uh, sides here, just kind of working my way, putting uh, a bit of glue, um, and also securing it on the inside since I have access to the inside. I put I what I do is I glue part of it with modeling glue. Uh, just kind of use whatever your choice. And this, uh, I use this Reveal Contacta Professional. If I said that correctly, probably not. Um, to put a bead across here, I like a little thicker glue that's going to really weld that plastic. But uh, while I'm holding it in place, I, I just use some regular super glue, CA glue, 
and a little insta set to uh, lock that into place so it doesn't go sliding around so I kind of get two bonds going on there so just kind of working my way from front to back I'm not gluing the whole side together but just kind of this front part and then moving to this uh, middle part and then finally the back part here uh, getting that glued and then I repeated uh, on the other side now there will be in uh, you know, no major gaps when I did that. There were a few issues. I'll talk about those in a second, uh, but no major gaps. Um, these supports, I've put them in there and they just really don't even hardly connect to the sidewall. So to me, they're just uh, not that useful. And I think they would probably get uh, in the way. And I think that's maybe part of the problem. People have such bad fit issues because it's really not bad. As you can tell, there's really no major gaps. You can see uh, right here, I put a little bit of styrene. There was a um, seam line here. Um, a little bit of a gap where this came together on both sides and I felt like I was going to be chasing it too much um, where was that it was kind of difficult to sand so just a little bit of styrene I'll add a little bit of detail and I don't think it will uh, stand out any once we uh, paint over it I think I'll just add to the detail there are some sections you add in um, these parts right here glue in uh, there's some little novel nozzles these little wings also glue in uh, th these are two parts uh, so there's going to be a lot of sanding on all these edges uh, where this comes together obviously a lot of sanding here you're going to have that seam line where these join together but as you can see um, I think once we prime over it uh, most of that will just look like a uh, one joint that it won't be uh, too noticeable if any uh, one little gap I had was on this side right here I just uh, took a little of this tester's uh, contour putty and put a bead in there uh, take a little q-tip and kind of I got these pointy q-tips put a little bead and then just kind of wipe off the excess sand it and once it dries you can sand it away and seal that little gap overall the really pleased with how this part came together really glad I decided to go without that now it won't interfere with any of my wiring or fiber optics and it's really strong it's not it's not going to go anywhere it's not that big of a model it doesn't need those supports so here you can see I got the bottom I'm working on getting these lights for these uh, bottom wings to come out. As you can see, I have a little light blocking idea for a little black and silver paint. Um, I did on these five millimeter uh, LEDs, these are orange ones. They're a little too thick. You're gonna to have to sand it. If you can see on this one, uh, just take a sanding stick and sand down the two sides of it. Still works as long as you don't get into the actual uh, diode that's in the middle. Um, I've never had a problem doing that, so. Uh, sand it is down plus it diffuses the light which is what I needed anyway and as you can see I kind of installed one here with just some hot glue kind of holding it in the place and also that black hot glue uh, also uses a it's good for um, light blocking around the area so what I'll do is I'll hot glue this one in and then there's the top part of the wing that will fit in like this and fortunately those holes are right on top of each other so the light will cover both of those. I've already checked the lighting to make sure it works. Always check your lighting before you start sealing stuff up. And then there's a gap here that the wiring can easily come through. Now you can uh, obviously use a smaller LED or like a three millimeter or smaller. I just happen to have a bunch of these orange five millimeters. So uh, I'm not gonna buy a whole nother pack just for a couple of LEDs and the sandies down should work fine. So all that's looking good. So I have to attach these wings. I'm gonna have to glue them. There's no locking tabs on here so you just have to kind of eyeball it and glue it into place and once i do that there will be uh, some sanding again there and once i have those on i'll have to add in my fiber optics for some of these smaller lights still debating whether i should add in um, just a couple of others um, just for uh, give it a little bit more life um, not too worried about being screen accurate i guess uh, i just want to make it look good uh, and then we'll attach the top and bottom. Of course, we have to attach our engines. Uh, they will go here, and there's a nose cone that will fit over. Now, when I look at the box art of the, uh, what looks to be the, uh, I guess, uh, studio model, you can see that there is a seam line on that nose cone. So I won't have to worry about filling that in. I can just kind of attach it. I'm not sure if it's that way or I think it's that way. Yeah, it looks like it's that way um, you can just attach it and glue it into place and then that seam line right there is just kind of uh, what it's supposed to be on the model there is a little cap that goes on the back, back section 
that I'll have to attach once the top and bottom are put together. I am going to work on trying to fill that in and make it look like a seamless part as I did back here. There's a couple of lines here you're, you're going to have to fill in. There will be some sanding and stuff. I tend to use on minor uh, gaps just a little bit of, of um, super glue with, um, with, with some Insta set and then sand it in. So looking good. Uh, no major um, gaps right now. There will be some going on here. I've already kind of tested with this. There's going to be some sanding and filling um, once we join these over, but uh, join these together. It shouldn't be any more than what I've already done. So everything's looking good. And so uh, we'll just uh, keep moving forward. All right, I've uh, attached this top part of the wings to come off the lower section of the hull. Uh, it's got my lights in there. There is, of course, going to be um, quite a bit of sanding here. There's no uh, connecting tabs. You just have to kind of line them up as best as possible, put some glue on there, um, clamp them into place wherever you attach it. But it's just going to be a huge seam, so it took quite a bit of sanding to get that done. So you, do, you definitely want to have a good weld um, um, going on with your plastic. And what I do, sometimes you'll get those uh, seams that just don't seem to go away no matter how much sanding. If I see that happening, that's when I usually put a little bit of super glue on there, um, let it dry to kind of fill in that seam because sometimes I think you can just keep chasing that and it never quite goes away. So you have to kind of, you can use petty and stuff. I just like super glue because it's fast and it dries hard and it's easily sandable. So you'll have to clean those up, but all that's done. My lights are working. I still have to attach a clear piece in there. So I thought I'd have a little bit of fun. I was just looking, I want to give it a little bit more life other than uh, the little lights that are on it. And uh, of course the uh, you know, as I watch shows, the, there's always some kind of blinking uh, light on any kind of explosive or whenever you're um, in movies, uh, every bomb has this red blinking light and it's kind of cliche. And so just a little call out to that. I've attached this uh, flashing red light here. There's a little space that just uh, fit a three millimeter light really well. And I've kind of sanded it flat though. And so that'll be my little call out to the dangerous flashing red light on all kind of explosives, whether it be uh, torpedoes or bombs or whatever. So, and it'll be out of the way, so it won't be like, uh, you know, too noticeable. Uh, this is something that kind of cracks me up whenever I watch a movie and I see uh, the red flashing light on a supposedly hidden bomb or when they go to defuse a torpedo or weapon of some sort, there's always that red flashy light going on. So just a little fun with that. Uh, may add some more lighting. I'm, I'm ready to start attaching everything here and sealing our things up. Put a little bit of uh, styrene here. There was a little bit of a seam showing on these engines here. And uh, that's just an easy way to kind of cover up. Now when I do that, I do try to sand away the hard edges on, on that so it blends better. So uh, if you notice on most model details, uh, it's not a hard edge. It kind of kind of blends in and it kind of soft, it's kind of a soft edge. So I try to do that whenever I add on styrene to different pieces. I did the same thing uh, here with these pieces I added. I kind of cut it in to where it's just not some square piece that actually kind of looks like it blends into the body. So I'm still trying to figure out if I'm going to do any more lighting with this. Um, we're going to have the fiber optics of course running. We'll have the engine lights. We'll have these uh, Whatever these are, I guess some kind of uh, impulse drive, it's hard to collect. I don't know, some lights there. Of course we have our red flashing light. I don't know if I'm gonna add maybe some, a few more fiber optics. I just haven't decided that yet. But when I come back, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this. This is obviously gonna be um, quite a bit of work to, uh, now as you see it fits together pretty well now. I'm not having major issues, but of course there is gonna be some seam lines there. We'll have to address uh, all into here and that will take some work. So I come back, it'll be sealed up and we'll look at it before we start doing any kind of painting. Okay, sorry for the background noise, the uh, washing machine's going, which I'm in, it's kind of close to me. Anyway, before I do close this up, I just want to kind of quickly show you uh, how the lighting's going. I have these fiber optics running. I did add a few more right here just to give it a little bit more life, but I've joined these all together. I have a light right here that's a little black, um, and shrink tubing um, hot glued into place with a five millimeter white LED in there 
and uh, has it run to certain spots. Now the tricky part is that there's also one of those lights on the bottom of the ship, so I have to have a fiber optic, fiber optic running to that. I just put a little dab of hot glue to hold this in place. Now normally you don't use hot glue on fiber optics, but these are pretty hardy. They're either 0.75 or 0.1 millimeter fiber optics, and uh, as long as you're not bending them while you put a little drop of hot glue, uh, they, they seem to be okay. And that's what's holding them all in place. They work fine. I've tested them all. I got a little bit to hold this in place so it doesn't pull out. Um, when I go to assemble the model, I'll have to put this wire into that hole, and then from there it should be okay. Um, and that one I'll probably add just a drop of white glue inside there, so once I uh, just before I close it up, once I close it up, that will hopefully set and protect that LED. I have my lighting from uh, the bottom here ready to go, and I'm condensing all the wires, shortening them a little bit. Still have to run a wire through that tube to connect everything, and uh, but I've tested everything and everything's looking good, so now I'm ready to start sealing it up. All right, where well, is the uh, built Kazon Torpedo? Um, yeah, quite a bit of work um, getting all of this uh, filled in together. Uh, there were some gaps in here I had to work on, but uh, I think most of it's looking pretty good now. Now I've added in the uh, nose cone and the tail cone. Now I tried to blend that together. Uh, some of the lines, there was a little tiny nose cone that had to be put on there. Um, so hopefully that will blend together. I've added some clear styrene over these areas here where the lights are. Now at the moment they're masked off. That's why it has a little bit of that pink tape on it. I'm about to put a first coat of primer and the primer will help, will help show any uh, imperfections or other areas that I need to work on. Um, it's kind of hard to tell just how well this is uh, covered up right now. I'm sure it'll be a, a little bit more work but the uh, primer will help um, per, um, show that. I have a little a liquid mask over our LED right there. And I cleaned it off with some alcohol, so hopefully it's all ready to go. So I'm going to give it a shot of primer and see where we're at. All right, I have my first coat of primer on. And overall, the body works pretty good. There are a few little places. There's a little blemish here. Looks like uh, some parts here that I'll need to touch up. But nothing major. I think overall, um, the body work came out pretty good. A couple little flaws. Uh, considering what we uh, had to do to get to this point, really not bad. Just a little bit more touching up, a little bit more sanding and filling, and we should be good to go. Now, I just used a rattle can primer, and I've been using this uh, Iron Armor Sandable Primer, and I got that at Harbor Freight, and I really like it. It levels out really nicely, and as long as you uh just careful if you're spraying, you know, you want to start... You know spraying kind of away from your model and then across and do short bursts and uh, but this primer really uh, leveled off really nicely and right now it has a really nice coat and we just need to make some fine tuning on some of the uh, little areas where little flaws are I uh, definitely could paint it up right now if I wanted to and it wouldn't be that bad but just trying to you know go that extra mile with some of the details on these models especially these older ones to make them look really nice but looking good so I'm going to touch that up and probably put on a my first base coat. Now, now last time with the Kazon Cruiser, I kind of mixed my own paint colors and to save me a little bit of a hassle of that, I found this uh, folk cart. This is a uh, matte color. It's called Starlight Gold and uh, very similar to the uh, color. I guess here's a little bit of the sprue. So very similar to that color, maybe a little bit more gold or yellowish. So I'm going to use that as my base color. And it's just a base. We're going to be doing some oil washes that are going to darken and deepen the color anyway. So we just need to get a kind of in the ballpark on that base color to start working with. So when I come back, we'll look at it with the uh, base coat color on. All right. Well, I've applied the base coat. And as you can see, I've also did a little post shading on it. Now, originally I was hoping that this color would be just a, a good match, but once I started diluting it in some water and filtering it, it just was a bit too gold. I ended up putting some kind of um, dark browns into it, and that made it way too brown. It came out um, 
way too brown. I want that kind of orangish tint to it. Um, so I ended up kind of mixing in a few other colors, some terracotta, uh, some orange colors and cream colors to kind of lighten it back up. So I had to go back over. Uh, much happier um, with this color. It has that kind of brown oranges color. I think that's a good match. Uh, so from here, and then when I uh, did the post shading, I just went with some black brown mixed in with my base color that I made. Um, so it would be similar. And I used that to uh, just do the kind of post shading, give it that kind of worn in look, give it the paint some character, a little bit of modulation throughout the uh, torpedo. So from here, I'm going to clear coat um, and protect what's already on there and let that dry for a day. And then what I'll have to do is mask off all these areas. We have this kind of dark gray and, um, to the front of the torpedo. I guess that uh, reinforced armor to pierce. I'm not quite sure, but I have kind of this dark metallic gray color that we're going to need to paint on the front of our ship. So quite a bit of masking and odd angles and some narrow spots. I feel it closely where it's masked and where it's not and um, get on to painting that. So first things first, I'm going to put on a clear coat to protect this paint and we'll start working on masking that uh, front of this torpedo. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that base coat, especially with the shading. I think it's starting to give the uh, torpedo some character. All right, this uh, quick beat of quick peek of me masking this uh, torpedo off. Um, that was not a lot of fun. There's a lot of sharp angles, very narrow edges, but I think it's all done. And some complex curves going on inside of here. Um, so I'm ready. I'm kind of going for a kind of dark gray. I'm going to use some from Decor. I got this uh, metallic paint. This is called Obsidian, and I mixed that. It was a little bit light. It was actually a little bit too light for what I wanted. So I mixed that with a little bit of this uh, Vallejo model color. Black gray uh, with a little bit of water and kind of a dark gray, a little bit of metallic. I don't think the metallic is going to show too much once we flatten it out with um, some matte coats. But anyway, I'm going to paint this up and we'll see how that looks uh, once we get that nose cone painted. All right, just a quick look at the painting of the armor over the nose of the ship. Um, everything turned out really well. I'm pretty happy with the color. Um, still has a little bit, um, maybe a tad bit darker than I wanted, uh, but it still has that kind of dark uh, gray, as you can see the in the background here, the color of that. That's kind of what I was going for, but the mask turned out really good. I think it's given it a really nice uh, look. I'm glad I did the kind of the shading uh, on these edges before I masked off. So having a really nice look. So from here, there is some uh, detail painting to do. I dropped my box. Hang on for a sec. Let's see if I can uh, put this in a way that we can see it without breaking anything. So as you see here, they've got some uh, some greens, purples, some brass colors going on. It's got purple in this section right here. Mm, kind of reluctant with that. I'll have to see. Um, but it has some just odd colors here and there, so I'm going to be working on that. And uh, may take some liberties when it comes to that, or maybe tone it down a little bit. It just seems kind of a little too colorful for my taste. Anyway, so I'm going to do a detail painting. Uh, once I do the detail painting, then... I'll come back and we'll start the weathering. We'll put, I'll do the detail painting. I'll do a clear coat, and like a clear matte on it or semi-gloss, and then I can come in and start working on doing the weathering. So just gonna work on this detail painting. I think there's some decals also that need to be installed um, or placed on, not installed, but uh, put on the model. They're very small. Now, in the instructions, they say to actually put it on this uh, dark part up front here. I just don't think that's a very good place. Uh, I think maybe here or even here, uh, there's kind of a nice surface area where this black uh, design, I guess Kazan emblem, would kind of stick out better. And it would give a little detail in areas that aren't very detailed on the model. So I'm going to work on that. We'll be right back. 
All right, I'm ready to move on to the weathering process. I have all my detail painting. I put on some little decals. It's all been clear coated with a little matte um, varnish, uh, testers matte clear coat. And so it's protected, it's all the paint. So from here, first thing I wanna do is do a wash, much like I did the cruiser. I'm gonna use some old paint to make my own wash. This is burnt umber, and as you can see, it's kind of a rusty, dark brown. And I mix that in with some testers enamel thinner. And then I'll just make a little wash and kind of work that. Uh, very light color. I just want them to start to kind of give it that initial run over, let it seep into all the crevices. Um, and if I start getting a little bit of streaking, then that's good too. Um, we want some streaks going on there. So I'm not terribly worried about a lot of streaks. Uh, mostly with the wash, I just want it in the crevices, the panel lines, up in the corners, uh, just to start tying everything together. All right, just working on my wash here. I think it's already starting to add to the look of the uh, model. Again, just using some burnt umber oil paint, mixed in a little cup with a little testers enamel thinner, or you can use different things. That's what I tend to use with oil paints. That works just fine. And just taking the paintbrush, brushing it in, making sure that it's kind of settling into the recessed areas. Um, once it starts drying, then I start getting a little bit more wiping off the excess, then taking Q-tips and just start streaking it um, backwards, uh, giving it a kind of a sense of direction. And But I want it in these areas, and I don't mind if it's a little messy in some places. That's just because it's going to add to the character and give it a more weathered look. Uh, but already it's making a big difference in how this looks. It's starting to take away that toy look and give us that more realistic look. So... I'm going to be doing this. I'll get a little bit more specific with some of this oil without any thinner in it to really kind of darken some very specific areas. And uh, of course, I'll clear coat after every pass or so to make sure it's protected. And then I'll add in a new letter, new layer. All right, where is my finished Kazon Torpedo? As you can see, I had the lights already cut on. Not a whole lot of lights. We've got a few, uh, I guess, running lights here. I guess parts of the impulse engine or warp drive, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure these are the impulse engines. And of course, we have our little uh, red light. It's a throwback to or not to all the blinking lights in our explosive devices. You can see the lights underneath. So um, in the end, I'm really pleased with how it came out. Um, once I got all the... Parts put together, of course, we went through several layers, and that's what it's really about to get this effect, is kind of building up those layers of shading and color modulation uh, by using a base coat, then using an airbrush to kind of shade different areas. But a lot of work's done with the uh, pastels. The oil wash was first before the pastels. Uh, that kind of seeps in, starts darkening, getting our tones all blended together. And then different colors of dry pastels. And you can use the Tamiya kits or you can go to your local hobby store and buy the, uh, they're almost like chalk looking sticks and grind them up yourself. Or a cheap way to uh, actually works really well is uh, the little like eye makeup kits. Um, you can use it straight out of container just with a uh, paintbrush and you can brush them on. Just need to seal it every now and then to make sure it doesn't rub off. And that's all I did really. Um, used a spray can dull coat from testers uh, as, you know as i went along so pretty pretty easy on that makes things nice and simple i did a little bit of dry brushing in the very end on our front i wanted to kind of bring out the metal edges uh, of this kind of armored front section and really pleased with uh, how uh, we got all the seams taken care of there's no gaps or or visible um, fit issues going on there um, kind of looks like a nice um, seamless model now and i think by removing or not putting in those two supports uh, was a big help you obviously don't need it it's a lot easier especially if you're going to light it it doesn't block your lights i just don't see the benefit they had and uh, i didn't need it and the model is more than secure it's not a large model so uh, you don't have to put those in and i think that'll help cut down on the fit issues just do a lot of dry fitting, um, make sure it fits well. You'll have to sand some spots, especially underneath in these sections. When you go to join, you need to make sure those joints aren't uh, touching each other because they can throw off the rest of the model. And this uh, quite a bit of body work, and then I think it paid off. And for comparison, let's just bring out our cruiser here. Now, these are not to scale. So 
if I can get these both in here. These are not to scale. The cruiser I did in my last project, but they do look uh, pretty cool side by side, and they'll be displayed side by side. And I think I, I, very different ways of going about achieving these colors, but I, in the end, I think I matched them up really nicely. I think when you kind of look at them, you'd think they were kind of painted from the same uh, batch of paint, but it actually was uh, just me messing around with paints and stuff. And also, I think the uh, um, burnt umber wash kind of gives it that reddish tone in the end. So I think that helped a lot to kind of unify the colors between the two ships. So it was a fun project. I, for some reason, enjoy these old model kits, even though they're a lot of work. I think it kind of helps develop uh, my skills. And so, and they look cool. If you spend the time and add a little extra to it, I think they come out and look really nice. Anyway, I thank you for joining me. Until next time, everybody have a good one.